Here we go again. Time to get started this game and do it with the right character this time. So welcome back, everybody, to more Let's Play Mega Man X4. This is your host, the MJ406. And last time, in case you aren't aware, we finished off the X playthrough for this game. But, well, Mega Man X has gotten his time to shine the spotlight long enough. It's time to get to the character who this series is really about, or at least was the intended character for the series to be about. Zero. The funny thing was, I think starting Mega Man X... I wanted to say starring Mega Man X... This game, actually. I think Inafune wanted him to be the star of the series. Actually, I think that was the first Mega Man X. He wanted the game to actually start with Zero to begin with. But, you know, because this game was still called Mega Man, not having Mega Man in, they kind of thought would not help the game sell. So, they instead decided to make the game's opening about X. As the series has evolved, it's tried to evolve the story of Zero even more, of why he's such an important character for Mega Man X. X3 was the bridge to that by, you know, letting you ally with Zero as you went through. But this game finally gives you the privilege to play as the golden-haired red Maverick Hunter. And well, I'll just say this. While it's a different playstyle, it doesn't feel at all like Mega Man X. It is freaking fun! And I will say this, it is not intended for beginners. So, I'll warn you now, if you're trying to get in this game for the first time. Oh my god, who, we know who that is already. If you're playing Mega Man X4 for the first time, do not start with Zero. Unless you haven't played a Mega Man X game prior, which would be weird. Even then, you're better off playing with Mega Man X first, just to get a feel for the game. Let me make sure the button in configuration is still the same. It shouldn't have changed. Oh my god, it did change. Mother... Why do you change back? What the hell? Pain in my ass. Ugh, whatever. Okay, everything's good again. So, now that's done with. It's time for us to get started. Oh, and by the way, you go back and continue to go back to a save file you had. So, it's time for us to start our playthrough with Zero. Which, like I've hit it to before, he has different stories to start. Such as this cutscene. Him resting in a pod of some kind. Oh, God. Am I dead? Who are you? My masterpiece. But who are you? After him, he is my nemesis. Our rivalry is what gets me motivation in life. Now go. Destroy him. That's an order. Huh? But wait... God, his voice acting. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Oh my god. That's really violent. Oh shit. Zero, what have you done? Emergency! Emergency! All Maverick Hunters on call should assemble immediately. The same dream. Again. Why is there an alarm system of an accent? I've never figured that out. <laughs> so yeah! If you haven't figured it out by now, they hit strongly at Zero being created by Wily at this point. So there you go. You pretty much have confirmation now. Man, we submerged to the point five five six seven. They've occupied Sky Lagoon. They. This looks like Rebel Force is doing. Rebel Force? Okay, I'm on my way. And well, there's you have zero different music for his opening stage. So let's go. So the way X. The, Plays X. Damn it, so much of Mega Man X. The way Zero plays, he doesn't have a buster. Instead, he just has saber slashes. All he uses is a saber. But look at how fast it moves. Look at this thing. Oh, it's a work of beauty it is. Like, playing Mega Man X and then going to this and getting to play as Zero, it's so refreshing. Get away from me, you stupid dragon. By the way, Dirk did do that dragon will make it easier to fight him early on once you get to his actual fight at the end of the stage. Thanks for that. I'm playing like an idiot again. But you look at this. You got a three slash combo that just, oh, it destroys enemies. Just keep in mind that slashing will automatically stop you in a dash. He takes some getting used to, which is definitely why you want to play his X first. But, you know, playing his 
Zeros is so fun in this game. Oh, Dragoon, nice to see you again. Dragoon? You're hurting the 14th unit? Why? You're a 14th unit, why? This doesn't look good, Zero. That Maverick took out the power. What? The Sky Lagoon will come crashing into the ground. Yes, and destroy the entire city. We have to do something. We should do something. Let's not, it's too late. I must escape now. You'd best do the same, Zero. Son of a bitch. Damn! If the Sky Lagoon falls, it will be disastrous! There's no time! I'm going down! I'm going down, Mayday! No, you just left. So yeah, plot starts the same way as before. It's just Zero had some terrible nightmare about Wily, or Willy, whatever his name is. The carnage, it's horrible. Those Mavericks will pay for this! So, yeah, I should probably explain that now. So! It was actually first... Ow. Zero being created by Wild was actually first hit at an arcade game called Mega Man... What's called? Mega Man Battle or something? Oh, crap. I forget what it's called. Mega Man the Power Battle, I think. There are two arcade games. And while the second one... Well, basically, it was like an arcade-style game where you got the Mega Man and Proto Man to fight a bunch of... Uh, of the Robot Masters. The second game, the sequel, Mega Man Power Battle 2 The Power Fighters, allowed you to play as another robot that you see in Mega Man 7, who is actually made by Wily. And funny thing, that ending, he actually, well, because you defeat Wily using his own robot, he complains about how strong he is and how he goes against him. And basically hints that he's making Zero to surpass anything he's created up to that point. That's all that is. Iris, what are you doing here? Are you okay? Zero, did you come to save me? Yes, hang on. A huge maverick appeared and... Stay here, Iris. I'll handle it. And there's our girl, Iris. Is this really one of Rebel Forces? I don't have a moment to spare. I have to defeat him or else... Don't worry, Iris. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna be going. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm just having fun. But you know, same evil dragon as before. Slash it to death instead of shooting it to death. But now you can see the power of his saber slashes at work. I have a different order for going through zero, mainly because of weapons and e tanks and all that. All right, come on down. Come on down. That's right. Come here. Look how strong these saber slashes are. He didn't even get to attack me! <laughs> oh, you pathetic piece of crap. That was fun. But yep, the story is actually different in this game. Instead of just going down and fight it, now you rescued Iris on your way, apparently. Or just left her there. Zero, long time no see. Colonel, what are you doing here? I've come to save my sister Iris. I only hope she's okay. She's fine. I just rescued her. Oh? Thanks, Zero. I owe you one. Colonel, I have a question for you. Did your unit attack this place? What are you talking about? Rebel Force came here for help. We weren't involved in the attack. They suspect you've become a maverick. What? Disarm and come with me to the HQ. I'm afraid I can't. Soldiers never drop their weapons. I won't do it. Not even for you, Zero. Then they'll think you're a maverick. So be it. The Rebel Force prefers war over dishonor and shame. Goodbye, Zero. Wait, Colonel! Listen to me! Son of a bitch! Damn! This isn't good, Colonel! They may decide the entire Rebel Force is a group of Mavericks! Yeah, they may, might just do that. Again. And make sure to do whatever it's safe on, not blow it. <laughs> I really don't want to blow it. So, you know, same song and dance. Brave soldiers of Repliforce, we have all been wrongfully judged as mavericks by the humans. We cannot suffer this indignity and live in disgrace. We will build our own nation of Reploids. But remember, this is neither about insurrection nor rebellion against our human creators. This is about our liberty and security. We must battle for our own individual rights and our own survival. Together, we will build our nation a sanctuary for all Reploids, our own utopia. Let us forge onward towards a new golden era for the Repliforce. Yeah! We're going to die!
I too share the general sentiment. Take heed, we have no other choice. Let us fight valiantly, with courage and pride. Without fear, for we are the Rebel Force. The most powerful army in history! Yeah! Also, did he try to say vehemently? Or vehem vehemently? Ugh. The voice actor in this game is not great. You're going to see more of that <laughs> later, though. Oh, boy, I can't wait. The general has finally taken action. And now, my maverick hunters, what will you do? I'll be watching closely from here on out. <laughs> I figured I may as well represent the cutscene again in case you never watched the X playthrough for some reason. So there you go. That's why I'm not going to skip any of it. Oh! And look who's here this time. It's not double. Iris, what are you doing here? My brother, Cuddle, started the coop. I thought you said coop for a second. I know. Please, don't fight against him. This must be some kind of mistake. They've occupied several cities already. As a hunter, I must stop them. Zero! I must go now! This planet needs me! I would hope it would. Anyway, we still have the jungle! And if I enter enemy out by jungle, destroy the weapon under construction. Web Spider. Cyber Face, a bug is corrupted the network. Diamond to Cyber Face exterminated. Cyber Peacock. Air Force! The Rapid Force ship has taken off. Pursue it blasted out of the air. Storm Owl. Ah, uh, Volcano! Dragoon of the 14th unit is a traitor. Locate and bring him back to, to Hunter HQ. Magma Dragoon, who we saw back in the airship there. Marine Base, Rep Force decimated the city and left. Pursue them aboard a land chaser. Ah, oh, Jet Stingray, I hate your stage. Bio Lab, the abandoned lab is now operational. Investigate and destroy the lab. Split Mushroom. Military Train, a military train is moving supplies. Cut off Rep Force's supply routes. No problem. Slash Beast will be in my way, though. That'll be tough. Snow Base, we discovered a hidden Snow Base. Halt production to the end of their new weapon. And Frost Walrus is a joke. Okay, so now I have to do Zero's playthrough. Well, I'm gonna do Jet Stingray st stage first this time. Because I want that E tank now. Because, well, the close range fighting can make this game a little harder if you're not used to it, so prepare yourself. Back to Jet Stingray, who destroyed the city, escaped to the sea. And, well, still got the Chaser stage. Probably the least favorite stage of some players, but. I mean, it breaks the monotony, but at the same time. Not really in a good way. So, yep, the game basically sets up the plots the exact same as before, but, well, the story elements are different. It's probably proper to go through the whole game in Zero, even after I just did the Mega Man X playthrough. There are some differences with the game, though, because, well, you can only be one of the characters in each playthrough. That changes in the later games. But, well, I can go over that at a later date. Oh, God, I hate these freaking platforms. Right, I should do a dash jump there. What was I thinking? I should jump and then dash. Damn it. But yeah, I'll say this right now. You know those light capsules that X could get to give himself armor enhancements? Here's one thing that makes this game harder for Zero right away. He doesn't get those. Oh, god damn it. So yep, no armor enhancements. You don't need armor this time around. Instead, now all you need are the heart tanks and the sub tanks. So yeah, uh, make sure you're ready for that. Uh, okay, good. Hang on. Yeah! Oh, I did it too early. I hate this section. I really do. <laughs> like, in Mega Man 5, it was kind of rough, but at least you could like fully control yourself. This one is so fast paced and rough to handle. And the fact you do platforming on it, just, ugh. It really weakens this game's reputation just from this one stage alone. This is the only stage I actually hate. But yeah, if you heard me sing all these praises and might have heard me in an earlier game say why people may not like this game as much as, you know, X1 or X2. Well, if you already heard some of the voice acting, maybe you'll under... Oh, God, why do you go forward? Damn it, I've accomplished nothing now. If you heard some of the voice acting, you already may understand why. Mega Man X sounds like a girl because it's voiced by a girl. And, well, if you could tell from the opening cutscene, Zero's voice actor is much better. Because I think the way they did it, they... Capcom, with these early games of their voice acting, ended up getting a lot of their voice actors, like, in-house. Well, particularly for Mega Man X4 and Mega Man 8, when it comes to the Mega Man series, anyway. 
And, well, it shows. It shows that they were not putting a lot of effort into it. Not the voice actors, but Capcom themselves. I will not give full discredit to the voice actors. They tried, but, you know, they're not professionals. There's only so much they could do. I mean, you could also say, how could they be this bad? But at the same time, you know, they were usually doing other things. So they only, most of these guys only did voice actor these two games. I'm pretty sure they never did anything else. Like, I think they got some of these people, like, straight out of their, like, finance department or whatever. Like, yeah. They literally went in-house with their voice actors. Capcom USA. For those of you wondering, for the for Japan, they probably did official voice acting. But for the U.S. version, they did not give a shit. They just went with whatever they could do. Since they didn't want it all sounding Japanese. For this game, anyway. Ow. And yeah, it shows. Could you not jet sting right? Could you back off? Okay, there we go. Got the E-Tank. Woo! And I just leave it at that. If it sounds really bad, that's why. That's one negative quality people may have with this. It's hard to take the story seriously with the voice acting so bad. You can tell from the Zero story when you get... Ah, from his screaming. Like, it just doesn't sound right. Ah, uh, he's still after me. Enough already. We settle this now. So, Jet Stingray. This battle might actually be difficult. I only came here with the E-Tank, though. So, Jet Stingray with Zero. Just get behind him and just keep trying to slash him. And slash these little guys away. Just try to stay behind him wherever he goes. Otherwise, just try to slash the little uh, ground hunter so you can actually protect yourself. Oh, jeez. Okay, could you... There you go. I was going to say, sit still, man. Like, this is just a little mush, dude. Anyway, his slashing is quick and responsive. That's what still makes it fun to be zero. Because he is... Oh, he moves so well. I don't care about those stupid little stingrays. And while if you're behind him when he's doing the suction thing, he'll just stop it right away. He won't even hurt you. He'll just stop doing it. Just keep in mind, the red brown hunters made it a little more difficult because you got to be a little faster with them. Well, not really. See? Really easy with zero. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> For real, dude? Wow. I thought that was going to be a little harder. I was frustrated over dying the first half of the stage. You know what? I passed the rest of it. I was going to say flying colors, but I nearly died in the second ride chaser one, so I shouldn't say that. I never mentioned you heal when you get to the second half, too. Oh, uh, they kept the Japanese names for the techniques, too. I guess they're samurai related? I don't really know. Versus Hien Kyaku. Dash button while jumping. Maybe executed in the air. Thanks. So, yep. He gets some sword techniques. The first one's an air dash. Oh, right, by the way, he can't air dash to start. Just a heads up. All right, then. Who next? Hmm. Well, the second E tanks at Cyber Peacock stage, so... I think I'm going to regret doing this early. Because this fight with Zero is a lot harder. With X, you can easily dance around him. But with Zero, you got to hit him, too. So we got to go to Split Mushroom, who occupies the... Laboratory will attack anybody who visits there. This stage could be a good bit harder with Zero. But anyway, Zero has sword techniques. First is Hyun Kyaku. Shit. First is Hyun Kyaku, which basically just lets you do the air dash. Not really much of a sword technique there, but, well, air dash. Another good reason to be Zero and do Jet Stingray first. Do Jet Stig Racing to get an air dash with zero. Trust me, it makes things a lot better. Thanks for your generosity. <laughs> God, this game really likes to be generous with giving you energy if you look like you're playing like shit. They're really generous for the friggin' weaker players. Not, I might have to say this is the easiest game of the X series. With the mid-stage checkpoints, along with the fact that they may heal you, you struggle in one section of the stage. Unless it's just early game they do that, just to ease you into it. Maybe midway through the game, they stop doing that. But I guess at least they ease you into it, which is nice. If it was your first Mega Man X game, at least they don't make it too difficult for you to get into it. But yeah, where playing through X made this game really easy, Zero's playthrough is not nearly as easy. Since you can't get the armor parts that Mega Man X could, well, 
he has to actually work a little more towards his. You gotta work a little harder to get through at zero, because, well, it's not as easy for him to survive. Oh, I thought he had a double jump. That might be a later game. Or it might be when I get my next ability, which is why I'm doing this stage next. Because this ability helps out a lot of things. Oh, yeah, we got this annoying mini boss. Well, we might actually have trouble this time because of freaking, well, being zero and not having a plasma shot like X. So come over here, do your thing. Let's go. Just try to triple slash your way through him so that way you can easily, you know, wreck his shit. That third slash lingers for a long time, so you can rack a lot of damage if you do it right. You can also do air slashes, which also linger. That's the thing with Zero. He doesn't really have to worry about invincibility frames. He just has to slash enemies a lot. That's all. All right, come on. And there we go. Problem taken care of. All right, let's move on, shall we? I'm tired of being here. This part of the bio lab. Let's go. I hurry up and get this over with so I get in this episode. Hopefully I do it on the... Ow! Right now. At least it's really easy to counter enemies that get in your face. That's one really good thing about Zero. In fact, he can just counter enemies that come up right in his face. Man, if only these guys would actually drop health energy. Or life energy, whatever. But they don't. Speaking of life energy, I better get that heart tank. Or things are going to be even harder. Oh, come on, break apart. Oh, God, no! Shit. Well, time to die. Oh, good. At least they're respawning me right here. All right. Heart tank, round two. Ha. Ah. Okay, there we go. Man, thank goodness for these generous spawn points when you die. Oh, otherwise this would be so much worse. Having to do the entire section over. They give you so many more checkpoints, which makes it much less frustrating to deal with. Maybe that's why I like this game a lot more than the others, because it doesn't have nearly as much frustration. It can still be challenging at times, but... You know... When you still have the challenge there, but just make it less frustrating to put up with... That makes it a lot better. Oh yeah! And the Saber Slashes can deflect some bullets, or erase them entirely. His Saber has a lot of good uses. Like, it looks a lot better than you'd expect. Just make sure you slash things that can actually get killed. Like, see, up up close and personal, when you actually have to get close to an enemy, Zero's wonderful. When it's better to stay back, it's a lot harder. But, well, that's what gives you an extra flavor to this game. It's a completely different feel. It's something you'll eventually get if you go to the Zero series, which is about him if you couldn't figure that out, by the way. It's technically the sequel series to the X series, in case you're wondering. You made this far. I'm impressed. You interested in a real challenge? Oh, God, yeah. Who's your commanding officer? Never mind that. It's time to fight. Damn it. I was hoping to find him out so I could friggin' get you both done in. Mm. Just gotta watch out. Okay, run! Just watch out for this first attack. That's the part that's really frustrating with Split Mushroom. That first attack can really pile on later in the fight if you let it. And then this. Ow. Alright, better hang up high so I don't get slaughtered. And see, the thing that sucks... Why, they just be easy... Ow. To follow a pattern. Well, eventually they both, both start going to different patterns once you hurt the main one enough and he gets faster. So, yeah, be careful with this. This might be obnoxious for this reason. Just try to stay up high when you're able to. And remember, that body spin attack of his is deadly. Okay, there we go. Whew! Good, I beat him in one try, too. Thank goodness. See, that fight's a lot harder with Zero, because you have to keep getting up close. And when you have doubles going all over the place, it's... Ugh! Oh, it just gets terrible. Recommendation, though. Beat up Web Spider first, we want to make that fight easier for you. Still has Spark Mandrel Syndrome, just not as easily with Zero. Just a heads up. But with this, we get Kuenbu, which is a really good ability, by the way. With the correct timing, higher and further jumps are possible while airborne. Okay, this gives you a double jump now. Kuenzan may be activated while attacking in the air. You also have an attack while midair. What's proper properly, or not properly, what's popularly referred to as the rolling slash. 
And there you go. It's right there. Oh. And the good thing about the special weapons, by the way, well, most of them anyway, no ammo. So you use them all as much as you want without having to worry about ammunition at all. It's pretty sweet. Like, playing as Zero is so freaking fun. And there's almost no limits. Then again, the ones that do have limits are extremely powerful. If X was a friggin' power trip, unlike the likes of the other Mega Man X games, Mega Man Zero, Zero here is a power trip that just is unlike anything else we've seen in these games before. It's amazing. It's like being a robotic samurai. Kicks ass. Speaking of which, let's end this episode here. So, I guess I'm gonna go after the second E-Tank and struggle on this stage. Oh, that boss is gonna be a killer. Come back next time, and we're gonna make our way through cyberspace and take out Cyber Peacock, as well as work at all the other Mavericks. I wanted to get the E-Tanks so I could at least prepare myself if I struggle, because, well, I can always refill everything before the Fortress anyway, once I do Frost Walrus, so I'm not worried. Still, I might do a different order entirely, just to get all the tanks I need. Eh, I'll figure it out. It shouldn't be that hard. I already got through with X, so going through with Zero, I should be pretty familiar with everything, like, on an immediate basis.